Okay, Daryl, so maybe you can drive. Yep, and then do you want me to just pull up, well, I guess. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not sure the team has previously seen your search at all, so. Yeah, it'd be great, great if you give them a little tour to get, because that'll get them centered into the storyline, like how what you've learned, and maybe do it on the non-serialized items so you can, so because mm -hmm. there's something you do trust, and I'm building on something we trust. So, so for this, this is one of our proofread items. You drop it into. Yeah, you got to. There's a way to actually have this thing run on your item card. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, yeah. Well, so I have it here, but like it doesn't. You don't get enough results. So I, uh, I guess here. So, so here's that same item that I was about to search for. It's a proofread item that has this. You can see this level of it, of detail from his search, and so you can select a specific location. Right now, I have it set for all locations, but you can see that the quantity is moving in and out, the, the 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 dollar total dollar value, and then the average cost at that location at the time. Yeah, so um, that's probably going across all the locations. So you see how there's a filter there that says location. Mm -hmm. So if you grab a particular location, and we can compare the cost of what this says to what Netsuite's saying is the cost at this current point in time. Yeah, see three sixty two. Is and it three, three, so up here it's 362. 362, okay. And it's interesting when you begin to observe the cost change, okay. And then and then there's something I need to always say, because I don't know if you have the situation. If you ever get into negative inventory, all bets are off. You can't trust cost anymore. Okay. Right. Okay. So, but at least this starts to tell the story about like where is all that happening, right? So, okay. So you can see what we're doing basically is showing the quantity changing, the dollar value and the average cost. And so then this way it helps you inspect what's going on from inception. And so, so similarly, like these are all like inventory decrements, I guess. But yes. if we were say doing an inventory receipt to this location or assembly build at this location, you would also see those transactions and how they're impacting cost and quantity here too. Yes, yeah, so the list is pretty big as I see it. One of one to twenty five of eight thousand. So somewhere in there, you have receipts. Right. Um, so so this is a non serialized item. We'd be try to do the same thing for a serialized item like oh, one of our printers. Mm -hmm. um, you can see it returns no results. Is that, uh, we, is that... we, we, we transact this SKU at this location every day. So it there's there would for sure be results if if the search was um, configured okay. that way. It it would be in that location. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the name of that assembly? G G F A S M. Yeah, G F A S M. It's this one right here. Um, so I could even remove the location filter to see if there's anything that returns. Yeah, no problem. So let's go modify the search because the first thing is is that can you show me what the accounting the, the accounting tab shows? Because there's assumptions in the search that sometimes you need to tweak the search. Okay, so your inventory asset is one two zero zero three. Let's go back to that other item, which was the one that did work. Can I see the asset one two one two zero zero two? Okay, so likely, I'll, let's go ahead and modify the save search, and go down in, in here. See where it says account special type is inventory asset. That's Netsuite's out of the box thing. And so what we're going to do is change that and just put account numbers in there. So just go to account, not special type. Remove this altogether, mm -hmm. and make it account. And now let's put in your account numbers that you're tracking inventory under. I, you had 12002, let's put 12002 and 12003 and any others that you have. We'll go back to that assembly, uh, the serialized assembly and see what happens. All right, I would just refresh this screen and it should come up. Try not to, I try to use the item cards. It's easier, it's faster. You know? Actually, what, one question here is when it, when you're using it on the item record, mm -hmm. uh, is there a way to auto load the item? It's usually blank when we come when I come to the page. I have to like copy and paste the item name into it. Yeah, normally you don't have to. You shouldn't have to touch that at all. So I just have to look at what you're doing. Okay, so first let's interpret what's happening. Uh, if you scroll over to the to the right, it's got an average cost. Is that does that seem reasonable? Let's yes. let's filter for location first. Well, no, let's do all locations because we'll verify on the item right. Sort by date. Yeah, careful. It's sorting that. It is sorting by date right now via that sort column. Mm -hmm. It's inherently got the date in it, and it's important that sort column stays good because 
there's intraday activity. And the intraday mm -hmm. activity or the order of operations is important in the calculation of the math. So this is saying at DCL average cost is 19.0714 and 292. Oh, wait, that's a specific location though. Yeah, well, if you go down to your location, you'll see it in your location sublist here, that, that one there. DCL Kentucky 18. No, so that's off. Seems well, you, like. you, you you sorted it, so I'm not sure what happened. So, oh, so when I change the sort, it changes the calculations potentially. Yes. So this, even though this is the most recent like inventory movement for the DCL location, DCL Kentucky location, this wouldn't be an accurate average cost. It's, it's, everything's calculating from the very beginning. If you go back and you hit that sort column, it's very likely, very very much likely the same, but. It, but it's one of these things where I just would be more comfortable oh, no. seeing it. And then I'd have to start to do a diagnostic to understand why it does what we calculate. Why is it different? So here you can, you can now go to the very bottom of this. Should I select the DCL location first? Cause that's what we're yeah. Yes, please. 1933. And it was something like 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So, those would be things we'd have to have to investigate. The fact that it says pending, see that says pending already there on the on the on the, oh, on three, the right. Three calculating right now. Yeah, it's there's the costing engines doing work. So if we tried your know, Ontario, we have, doesn't look like you have much activity. Let's try maybe the the yeah. what what about East? That one looks like it has some fair amount of activity. Okay, yeah, let's try that one. Okay, okay, oh, it's smaller, easier to interpret. Um, was it saying average cost is seventeen sixty six? I think that's wrong, right? Uh, east seventeen sixty six three nine eight. Yep. Seventeen sixty. Yeah. Well, pretty good. It rounded, but okay. So, all right, but at least we're not. We're still kind of have our confidence kind of up. Okay. So now, what's the question? Yeah. So so I yeah I guess my team is now that we've kind of changed the search and you're seeing at a quantity level, at least, what the movement of inventory and its impact on average cost at that location is, is this enough information or do we actually need to be able to like type in a serial number and say, show me the transactions that are related to this? I guess one question, two questions. Can we add serial number as a column in here? Um, is the, to get the average cost, it would simply just be all the transactions above, is that right? When you add the serial numbers in this, basically what you're going to see is, is basically it's going to, we're going to, we can try and do it right now. If anything, what I'd like you to do is hard code, just so it'll be faster for us right now. Can you hard code into the item reference down below here? That, that item we're doing just so we don't. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. For now. Right. Cause it's going to be more work for us to keep going back and forth. Zero, zero, two, nine, two. Yeah. All right. Great. Now, if you go over to the results. Okay, so what you got to do here is this. Yes, you're doing some summary types too, huh? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to scroll up and you see where it says item. Insert a row between item and right there. Okay, now go down into the go down into the join fields all the way down at the bottom. I want you to drill down and you're going to get into the into the join fields, and you're going to see inventory detail. It's uh, or it might be item number. Well, let's just put yeah, item numbers. Try item number. Yep, and then. Just pull up number here, okay? And add that dimension in here. That's it, okay? Probably wanted to hard code that location too. It's gonna to make the database work less hard for our interpretation. So we may wanna hard code that in next. Yeah, but um, seems it. Yeah, you, this is hard because it's now it's blowing out the database. Yeah, so. Trying to see when it has quantities though. It's interesting. So it's probably gonna create duplicate lines then, right? Because this is a quantity of 14 if it's only showing a single inventory number. Yeah, it's that's probably that, that, that's probably one the one of the ways I'd have to start to refine the search to get the quantity factor on that number, right? Because right now it was not in the assumptive model. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, if I did work on it. I could get it. What does the average cost show? Is it um, some of them? If you just go I mean, this, this is 
Right now we're looking in 719 though. So, I mean, this will show you an average cost, but it's not gonna be 1913 is what it's saying right there. Yeah, because you'd expect the quantity to be negative one, not, not, 11, not 11, right? Right. But when we think about what things do in weighted average, it might still be okay, you know what I mean, <laughs> right? But it isn't, it isn't technically right. And then to, to like my earlier point where I thought what we were trying to get at is the ability just to actually search for a specific serial number, we could take this column and add it to the filter area of this search. And then so you could just drop in a serial number and then kind of do like a, go back to back. Or actually, Marty, would that work or would that no. break your search? No, that, do, that does not give you what you're trying to do. Okay, never mind. Okay. See, because you got you to gotta get that, that your build, you're bringing things into existence. And then as you bring them into existence, you're creating these serial numbers. Okay, it's a function of everything else that was happening before, you know what I mean, of the new ones, because it's a, it's a, it's a weighted average as it's moving in time. So you got to have all that detail there. When you put that criteria of just that item, you now lose all the history of everything else that's influencing the cost. So, so are you saying it, it, would it be possible Ev, to like actually then to just have a search that we could drop in a serial number and kind of build this level of detail from it? Not from not with the standard NetSuite stuff, but I've got tools that can do that stuff. Yes, I definitely have tools that can do that. That you know, if you wanted to engage us, we could we could give you, but but we're working with the limitations of the built-in tools you know here to do to, to ask the question. Totally makes sense. You'd want to do that question. I mean, the, the only thing that I would add is basically the reason we want serial numbers is it's it all at this moment, Marty, everything from a financial perspective. Oh, yeah, it, it goes from 1913 to 1950, you know, in, in one month. Right. And it looks all reasonable to us. The only thing is we just don't know what that 40, 35, degree, uh, 35 dollars incremental what? dollars is coming from. Is, is perfect, it coming perfect. Perfect. So, so, so the good yeah. news is the good news is, is this is like just with what you have right now, before you even tweak it, you could ask yourself, okay, I got this one serial number says this one serial number says that. Then I, then I would ask the question, what was the date of that? What was the date of the other one? Right. right. Just to go, where's my Delta. Then I would go, okay, let's go to the, let's go to the item and let's just look at the dates between there and let's find the storyline of what happened. Right. That probably would begin to just illuminate these questions for you, don't you think? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and and there we don't have to do any work. We just sort of right. uh, we're just and then then if you guys needed more inspection tools, well, you know, we could do all kinds of things with. Give me a serial number, and I want to tell a story. Yeah, no, no absolutely. I mean, the other thing is um, we have obviously you know everybody is slowing demand. Uh, we have increased our inventory position. So it's got, you know, we have so much inventory. Okay, what would the average costing is it being triggered by something that we built three years ago or two years ago to something that we're building now. Makes and that's the other, the other part of the story that, I'm, that we're trying to say. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I think these, this is like a very good place to start if sure. you're trying to understand like what's happening, right? Uh, to see. I, and that's why I crafted this, this thing, because I was trying to do it for our clients. It was like I, trying to tell the story. So I realized the community could get value out of this. And I'm glad we're here. Uh, and, quick, quick question, Marty. We are considering turning on group average costing, yeah. uh, which are kind of average, do average costing across like whatever location grouping you're, you set up. Would that cause any problems for your search that we have right it, now? It, it shouldn't. It's all kind of what I'm, what I'm doing is just database theory. And so it's the same sort of thing as is going on when you use the group stuff. It's just kind of more intelligent to mm -hmm. bring in, see well, the way it is out of the box, it's just isolating the location. As soon as you introduce group, it's just saying, okay, this location is now part of this group and it's just factoring those other locations into the same thing. But the database, the search is in theory doing the same thing. So you should be you should be okay. Costing in the NetSuite environment is tricky. It's tricky to understand what that costing engine is doing, you know. But usually these tool this these things usually get the analyst's mind going. Oh, I think I understand what it's doing now at the database level. That's how we as consultants answer questions. It's, you know, we had to do, learn it ourselves. So for, for my team, I I, I think it would maybe maybe worthwhile for kind of take a look at the search that we tweaked. Yeah. and see if like that kind of starts leading you down the right path to be able to answer the questions that we're getting asked. 
Um, and if not, then maybe we actually do kind of engage Marty's Marty's company and, and, and figure out something a little bit more tailored to, to what, what, what our needs are. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to suggest the same thing. So, for example, just just to make an offer to you, like if we wanted to have something that says a couple things, I could see a couple tools that would be valuable. I got a, I, I have a serial number. Tell me the story about that serial number, which then can from that serial number, tell you the whole kind of costing sequence and so forth. In fact, there's some other things I could probably show you on my blog that are look close. Another one might be find me items for which the cost has changed by a material level, some threshold within a period of time, because I might be in this month in sort of mentality. I'm trying to explain inventory. And then it would hunt and show you, okay, here are the candidate items that look like they're varying heavy. And then from there, I would drill on that and go, okay, tell me the story about that, right? So that I can inspect that. That's kind of like custom tools that we could build on that. But it, under the covers, we're playing with these kind of queries Absolutely. to make all that come together. Yeah, I, I completely understand. So I think we just need to take a look at this. And, and you're right, Marty. I, I have, we have to start thinking about it in those perspectives. And when we do look into these in detail, mm -hmm. We're gonna start looking at how to explain on the inventory side, on the on the cost side, how it's impacting our financials, and and that's that's where we're gonna go with this. Okay, well, I think we were productive today. It, it was incredibly helpful tweaking that account because, like before, I was running into that. I like I saw you using that special account type, and I didn't know if swapping that was gonna break the rest of the search because it was using such like heavily. So there's such it was such heavily formula based. It it's scary. Like switching something like that would, would, would not give us. Yeah. The before, so. I, you know what? You, you, you've inspired me, Daryl. I'm going to write an article. I'm going to reference you by your pronoun. Don't tell me what it is. I don't want to know. Okay. And I'm going to, and I'm going to basically help people understand that. Stuff.